Hello everyone, this is Craig Reese with South by Southwest. We are here for the world premiere of Americana right outside of Paramount Theater. Not only is the director here, but we are lucky to have a ton of the cast here as well. We're gonna interview them on the red carpet and then we're gonna check out a Q&A after the screening. I am over the moon. It's so surreal and I love Austin. I love South By. This seems like one of those fun, more chill festivals. This is literally like the dream premiere spot for me. Just to be standing next to Tony right now is really the joy. He was so generous in the process. It's just been this benchmark that I've compared everything else to and it's not fair. It's like dream come true to work with a guy like that. He's so chill and so nice and has such an amazing vision. It felt like working with a friend to be honest. It's so funny because I worked with them on the movie for so long that by the time it was over, I never really got to see his face because we had to have COVID regulations. So when it was over and we met and watched it, I was like, oh, that's what you look like under there? He called me and said, I have this script that I think is gonna be the first thing I direct and was like nothing that I'd read. It maybe ever, and I couldn't say no. Before I actually wrote the script, I, I would write down the different images that I had in mind for the movie. I grew up in a small town, and so like just different images from that, and I want to do a modern take on the Western, and, and, and it just kind of started building from there. This is the kind of movie I've been wanting to find and be a part of. It's got like Coen Brother vibes, and you know, it's got kind of the broken chronology, multi-storyline thing of Pulp Fiction, and it's surprising. It's not the kind of film you walk into and you know how it's gonna end. We shot the film in New Mexico and just a wonderful cast of great people to be around. We shot some nights so we're all sitting around joking around quite a bit and we had, we had a good time. Even though this is Halsey's first like big film, she was fantastic. Like She's such a joyful person to be around. The character that Halsey plays runs home to uh, escape the chase of people trying to, to get her. I play Abigail Starr. I am Halsey's sister and it's like a lot of female liberation and so it was really nice to to be able to be in like a role where like you start a little put down but then you get to like work your way up and, and really break out of it. I play Chandra. She's in a very pivotal part in the movie. I play Sarah. She's a wine snob and I myself am a wine snob. <laughs> but I don't want to give anything else away. I'm so excited for Tony. I can't wait to see it um, and you know I can't wait to see Halsey up there. It's such like a welcoming and beautiful environment. Um, now, I'll, I'll kick things off. Uh, I went, this is submitted to South By. We're obviously watching it at screeners in our homes, and I really liked it uh, when it came in. But watching it here with an audience, I really, really fucking liked it. Like, this plays very well with the crowd. The humor comes across great. And I'm kind of curious, uh, how does it feel now that you're, it's out in the world once you realize how it works with a number of people. I mean, yeah, it feels amazing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared shitless coming in, you know, um, and, and and I still could be, I mean, who knows. But this is, this feels like, um, it was, it was amazing because I felt like for lots of people like get in the spirit of it, you know, like it's, it, it should be a good time in the movies, you know, and it should, um, you know, offer a range of things, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 an incredible feeling, you know. Like you know, like it's it's better than than I than I could have hoped. So you know, I want it to be, you know, like like in my director's statement, I I, I can get a real weird um, blue collar chip on my shoulder. You know, <laughs> I think even my director's statement is like this 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 isn't a uh, movie for like. Um, you know, professionals in LA. I mean, they, they, they can, they can, I want them to see it and like it and stuff, but this is like, this is for the people, you know, like this is, you know, um, and, 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 and I just, I, I want people to have, you know, I, like for me, like my, my favorite movies are not big, important, my favorite movie of all times, the original Bad News Bears. And, uh, and it's not because it's telling me anything, you know, I mean, it's got like a little license, it's just, it's just good comp company, you know, and that's, I, 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 you know, and it, it makes me feel things, and it's been a part of my life since I was like a tiny little kid, and I've passed it down to my kids, and that's, I mean, it's just my, I, I don't, you know, like, but that's, that's the, you know, that's the target for me, make, make, try to make a couple of those, you know, and so, that's, I think you hit the target. Um, now for the cast, I'm curious, what were your initial conversations with Tony like, and, and how do you feel like the character sort of evolved once you came on board? Before, before we answer that, I just want to take a moment. Any, any actors in here who aren't on stage but were in the movie, can you stand up, please? Can you all stand up? I know there's a couple of you. Please stand up. Yeah. 
There it is. Yeah, baby. Uh, it takes... Thank you. It, uh, it takes a village, and we had a really good village. You're such a good dude, man. We had a really so good, good village. Good. So um, my, early, my early vibe with Tony was I was shooting a TV show, and my reps sent me this script. They said they're thinking of you for the male lead-ish. And I was like, I, you know, I, that doesn't happen that often. So <laughs> I read it, and it was, you know, this really beautiful, cool piece. And it was, um, I, I kind of, I remember going to Alex Sachs and being like, are you sure you don't want, like, Miles Teller or somebody? <laughs> like, I was very, I was like, this is a really good script, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only random white dude in Hollywood that wants this part. And, uh... <laughs> And they were like, no, we, we thought of you, and we got Sydney Sweeney, and I was like, holy cow, the script, and Sydney's amazing. And so I, um, I jumped on board pretty early, fall of 2021, and, and I, uh, I was geeked up. And when I met Tony, it was really fun because we both love professional wrestling and movies, and, and now we're both, I'm a father, he's a father. So we had a lot to talk about, but more than anything, I just wanted to try to honor the tone because clearly... He's a cinephile, he's making something very specific, and my fear was something really specific is that I'm not gonna be in the same movie that he wrote. So I was always just trying to keep him happy and figure out what it was that he was trying to capture. And before we start, can I get everybody who wasn't in the movie to stand up? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> what was the question? I mean, just, just what was your first meeting with Tony like, and oh, how, yeah. did, how did your fuckface character evolve after he you were invited to be Mr. Fuckface. Oh, yeah, so uh, of course I read the script and I loved it, and then I heard, at the point that I got it was later than him, and I heard about who was in the cast, and I said, I'd be a fool to not do this. Uh, it sounds amazing. First time director, you're always kind of rolling the dice, but he wrote it, and whenever the writer directs the movie, often there's not a lot lost in translation, so um, I loved the script, I loved the world, I loved the cast at that point, and uh, we were just talking about this backstage with Tony. We screened this about a, maybe a month ago in LA, and uh, I was like, yeah, it's good. And then seeing you guys respond and seeing the latest cut, it's really good. And I'm so jazzed for, for Tony, because I know how hard it is to, to make a movie. It's not easy. To make a good movie is not easy. So I'm just happy to be a part of it and um, be a fuckface. <laughs> Yeah, so I've, I've known Tony for a few years. Uh, Tony wrote on a show I was on called Longmire. For, uh, and uh, Tony and I met there on the set in Santa Fe, and uh, we hit it off. Uh, I love Tony's writing on the episodes I did on Longmire, and he approached me uh, a couple, three years ago on this thing. You sent me the early, yeah, early yeah, stuff. Like early, yeah, like the, 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 the one part that I wrote for a specific actor I wrote, um, uh, Ghost Eye for Zong. Um, well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. And uh, I read the script, and I thought it was great. And uh, I'm so happy that I got involved, and I was able to make it down to, to be a part of the film, with especially this, this cast, Simon and Paul and Sydney and Halsey. And um, I had a great time. And I hope, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It sounded like you enjoyed it. <laughs> I didn't even see the balcony. That's amazing. <laughs> um, now, since you do have a TV background, was there a world where you thought of maybe doing this uh, as a show? Since it kind of has an episodic nature yeah. to it. Yeah, that's funny. No, th th that's actually the first time I've thought about it <laughs> as a TV. Yeah, no. Because, like, uh, I, you know, like, like, I like TV, you know. I love movies, uh, and and I wanted to, you know, like, you know, like I'm in my 40s. Like, if, if I'm gonna do it, I gotta, you know, like, since I was a teenager, I've wanted, to, uh, you know, uh, when I fell in love with movies, I've been wanting to, to do this, you know, and so, uh, and I wanted to do, you know, a story with a, I mean, I guess, you know, a, a middle, beginning, and end, even though those are all, you know, moved around on on, on this. Um, there's something it, almost in a way, it was, uh, I didn't want. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm gonna continue working in TV. TV is awesome too, but uh, there's something just really satisfying, especially for this. Like, you know, like I don't know how to like sustain this tone for you know, it's an hour and forty minute yeah. movie. Like, you know, like I wanted to do something, again, like that, you know, like that drive-in movie thing. You know, that you know, um, 
is, uh, and I don't know if you can sustain that aesthetic or that vibe uh, on a TV sh show. So I, yeah, it's always been been movie or nothing for me. You know, maybe if I if I wouldn't have been able to get it made, maybe uh, I would have tried to write a novel of it. You know, um, uh, before. It's not too late. No, so yeah, no, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, um, I mean, since this does have a non-linear structure to it. Does this sort of match the original script? Did you play with the edit of moving scenes and introductions around? Yeah, though this was like that opening section with Cal and stuff. That was all I knew uh, about the movie for like a year, and I just walked around with that in my head uh, and trying to figure out what to do with that. You know, like there's Cal is is like you know a version. Like I didn't I didn't kill my stepdad, but I. I um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, you know, this is about the 13th uh, script I've written where a kid kills the father figure, so there may be something going on there. Um, but, uh, but, but really, like, yeah, no, I, I had that, this opening section, and then, and, and then and it was kind of like building a world around that. So it was, it was, it was weirdly, like, it was nonlinear from the start in that way. And it was actually, it, like, originally I was thinking, like, Maybe I could, you know, do something like I don't know if you've seen the da Damon Seafron movie Wild Tales. I mean, just like an anthology film. Like, it's a great movie. It's a great fucking movie. Yeah, and um, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. And I was, uh, and I was thinking about, well, maybe I'd do something like that, and they, they'd all be variations of this '70s cinema that I love, you know. And there'd be like a car chase movie and stuff like that. And then, you know, I started writing that, and then of course, you know, you're like, oh, well, maybe I could make it all into, you know, the same story, and then, you know, multiple drafts. But that, that's kind of how it went. Um, but it was, yeah, it was that opening section first and then trying to figure out the bigger story where that section makes some kind of sense. I mean, since you clearly are the cinephile, and I love the ghost dog uh, call out in this, um, are you the kind of the director that gives your actors uh, like reference material, like I want you to go watch X, Y, and Z? Uh, I'm very... So I asked um, uh, Paul to watch Tender Mercies of Robert Duvall. Um, and asked uh, Sydney to watch uh, Coal Miner's Daughter, Sissy Spacek, um, and then asked the crew um, and, um, and folks involved to watch uh, Spielberg Sugarland Express. Um, but th but then other than that, because I don't want to get because you know it's my love of the movies is, is infused in this, but I want to like I don't want to be so fixated on that that I'm, you know not alive to the moment. Like like for me like. I mean, literally, like, you know, we were working on the last remix of the sound. Like, like you know, like, I, I did a last cut, like, trimmed, like, 10 minutes from the movie um, over the last month just cut to uh, get the pacing right. And, and like, like, I'm trying to, like, like throw in, like, even weird new sounds and, and different things. Like, for me, the, the whole joy is, like, like the, that constant... Um, uh, act of discovery like I get I get bored if I'm not doing it and and I and I wanted that for myself and the performers too so like some starting points but it's not like like you know oh no no I want you to to pay tribute to this yeah. movie or something like that there's just sometimes some reference points for some orientation but other than that just try to attend to the moment you know um and I'm not entirely sure where you guys shot but I assume it's somewhat remote so was this the kind of production where uh, everyone kind of hunkered down and bonded in isolation. Were there any sort of like offset rituals you had? Uh, my offset ritual was to like, it, it was during the time of COVID. So, I, you know, like, you know, was just to sit in my, in my rental house and be stressed was my, was my ritual. We, we, we filmed in New Mexico um, and uh, was just great. What, yeah, amazing. You know, so I mean, like we filmed Longmire there, you know, and so for Zon and I in particular, you know, we got to work with some, Reunite with some of our cast, you know, some of our cast. I mean, some of our crew members from Longmire there, and so that was very like, you know, like I, it's a, a great spirit out there um, in terms of just the the type of uh, people who work in the film industry in New Mexico, and so that was great. Um, but yeah, I don't know if if we, there was we, any. We were very hunkered down, but like more so than usual. I I don't know how this is going to come off, but I'm just going to say it, <clears throat> which big shock from yeah. my mouth to my publicist email. <laughs> um, I, I, we, we always have to do some form of a protocol if the COVID stuff's happening, but you also kind of dip your toes and go, maybe I'll see a movie. <laughs> maybe I'll go to the store. Uh, Tony's, we, we were so aware that this was a set budget. This is Tony's first film. It means the world to him. 
we were extra hunkered down, I think, than normal, just because we're like, we don't want to screw up this guy's movie by getting COVID. Uh, we literally felt that way. Uh, I think I can speak for some of the cast saying that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our, my ritual was watching movies that Tony turned me on to. Like, there were movies I'd never seen that I should have seen that I hadn't. Uh, I had never seen Sugarland Express. I had never seen Nashville. I had never seen Paris, Texas. And like, watching those movies helps me understand him as a filmmaker and go, well, what turns this guy on and what inspired, you know, maybe some of these things. All right, well, I think we got time for one last question, so I'm going to take it. Um, you, if like 10 years from now, someone brings this movie up to you guys, what are you hoping is your first memory like from set? Like, oh, that day is the one thing I want to like seal in and remember 10 years from now. I was just going to say, I got to know and work with Paul on this movie, and I've been such a fan of his, and uh, he on set, I just remember you keeping the energy going by being so fun and funny, and you would walk in the room, and you got to imagine when you're shooting a movie, it's 95%, at least for the actors, kind of sitting around and waiting, and this gentleman right here was so entertaining and funny, and, and I just fell in love with him, so I got to witness a, a, a brilliant comedian improv all day long, and I was like, i got to do this more at work, and lighten the mood because this it gets a little boring sitting around all day so that i remember him being a little silly goose yeah <laughs> and if you haven't seen this dude in, in red rocket do it yeah immediately go see that fucking movie please Thanks. it's also in down low that's playing at south by so go see that I, w I would have to say we were hunkered down in that house for i don't know how many nights it was eight Eight, Eight nights, yeah. Yeah, I think I was there three nights, but yeah, the, the improv skills of this man, Paul, over here. <laughs> yeah. What was we, the game, what was we, the game played? we played? We, did make, oh. we made up a game. Yes, what was it? I can't remember so the so game. So called a set. Uh, we make, make up names. That's a rap on blank. Yeah, that's, yeah, a that's a what, Okay, so there was a game we played called That's a Rap, and it, it a game like this was started by me and Sebastian on Itania, but we grew it to where now it's, you just say to people, that's a rap on and then you say an actor's name. But the game is, you gotta try to say an actor who's random enough that it'll make the other person laugh. <laughs> or, or, or you run out of names and then you have to keep trying to think of other people. Yeah, so it, that was a fun game. We played that yeah, for probably three hours. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, a day. At first everyone was laughing and then people were like, I'm gonna go use the restroom. And then, and then they wouldn't come back. They'd be like, those guys are so fucking annoying. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think we're out of time, uh, but thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you. Spread all. the word yeah. about Americana and vote. Pull out your phones right now and give it an audience award vote. It is eligible. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. awesome. Right, and that is a wrap on Abigail Breslin. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. And that's it for our coverage of the world premiere of Americana. I hope you enjoyed our red carpet interviews and the Q&A session. We have tons more videos, so go check them out.